attorney general and one of the leaders in the fight to keep Title 42 in place, Mark Burnovich, A.G. Burnovich, good evening to you and always great to see you. 19 states you, went to the Supreme Court and said, we're underwater here. This is a massive crisis. You have to keep Title 42 in place longer. The Supreme Court agreed, so that's where we are at this moment. Um, your thoughts on where this fight goes from here? Because this is an administration that conveniently says the pandemic is over for, for the purposes of Title 42, but when it comes to masking and other things, um, they, they're speaking and, and talking a different tone. And so it, it sends all these mixed messages and basically just appears um, as if they want to open the border and they want more than 6,000 people to cross every single day into the country illegally. Uh, Jackie, thank you for having me on. And we really need to put this in context. Since Joe Biden's become president, uh, nearly six million people have illegally entered our country. It's literally the population of several of our states. And in states like Arizona, one of the reasons why we have been a leader in suing and pushing back against the Biden administration's lawlessness is because there's not only a cost in human terms, but there's fiscal impacts. Yeah. There's places like Yuma, Yuma, Arizona, with tens of millions of dollars in unreimbursed health care costs. Down in Coast Chiefs County, Sheriff Daniels is having to deal with millions of dollars of costs associated with people that are legally re-entering our country. So earlier this year, we successfully sued the Biden administration and stopped him from rescinding Title 42. And then what happened was the ACLU filed a lawsuit and the Biden administration basically did a capitulation, uh, we think did a strategic retreat and colluded with the ACLU to rescind Title 42. And that's why I've had to be back at the U.S. courts, uh, including all the way to the Supreme Court, trying to stop Joe Biden from remo removing one of the very few tools we have left in our toolbox. Yeah, what baffled me was when Corrine Jean-Pierre um, answered a question about it and she said, well, this is a court order. This is when uh, the court had ordered that it was set to expire and, and that's what we thought was happening. And she said, we have to follow the court order, um, yet makes no mention of, of following the immigration laws of the country to <laughs> not allow people to illegally enter. I mean, it's, it's mind blowing when you listen to her sometimes. Well, the Biden administration has decriminalized and incentivized people breaking the law. They've allowed the cartels to seize operational control. And the reality is, is every time I hear someone from the Biden administration speaking, it's like that scene from Casablanca where it's like, shocked. I'm shocked there's gambling here <laughs> because the Biden administration has created this problem and Americans are paying the cost every day. And I will tell you, as, as a parent, it breaks my heart to know that it's harder for kids to get antibiotics nowadays because of the supply chain, supply chain shortages it is, uh, than it is to get fentanyl from mm -hmm. the cartels that are flooding it into our country. Yeah, um, so many problems with respect to people coming into the country illegally. As you mentioned, the illegal drug trade that the um, cartels are profiting from, the human uh, humanitarian crisis of people making that long, arduous trip, especially when it's cold. Um, we've heard so many stories about that. Um, also, the crime that it brings to places like Arizona and Texas. Um, we've covered that angle of this story as well. But I want to go back to the financial cost of this, because I think some of the stats that you gave, you know, brilliantly put in context. But here in New York City, when we had 17,400 migrants, Mayor Adams asked FEMA for a billion dollars in additional funding, which just gives you a sense of what he's anticipating the cost is going to be um, to taxpayers if he doesn't get that funding. And that's happening all over the country now as these migrants spread out. And it's not because Governor Abbott, uh, Gover pardon me, Governor Abbott and Governor DeSantis have, have sent a couple of busloads uh, up to different states it's because they come in and they do move around naturally. That's what happens over a long time period. Um, this country cannot handle this kind of extra economic uh, cost right now. Look, look, Jack, I'm a first generation American. I know why people want to come to this country because of the rule of law. And what the Biden administration is doing is not only letting the cartels seize control and profit, not only about with drugs, but with people crossing our border, but they've actually shredded or destroyed the very reason why people want to come here. And that's the rule of law. And so you can't have disorder. You can't have chaos. You have to have a process. And because we don't have a process, we are paying the cost, um, an unreimbursed health care cost. A majority of the people coming across 
across our southern border don't have health insurance. And so yeah. to me, when I see places like New York City or Washington, D.C. complaining about a few thousand immigrants, I think to myself, my goodness, more than five million have illegally crossed our border. Every day there's more than 2,000 gotaways. People on the terror watch list have been apprehended. So by any objective measure, this isn't a right versus left issue. It's an issue versus of right versus wrong. Any objective measure, the border is out of control. The cartels have been empowered. And the reality is we, we are putting Mexico on the path to being a failed state because of the failures of the Biden administration. Well, Democrat strategists uh, strategist will come on the air and have the conversation and say, well, uh, the Biden administration wants to work with the other side on this and they have to work it through in Congress. And there are things that, you know, Republicans can do, but they're not doing them. That doesn't seem the case. Republicans are saying we need to follow our immigration law and we need to work together to try to reform it if your objective is to bring more people here. But you have to do it legally in a safe manner and in a manner where it doesn't break the country. Doesn't not only break the country, but the, remember, every single item, whether it's a person or a drug coming across that border, the cartels are making record amount of profits. China is laughing all the way to the bank as they supply the precursor chemicals to make uh, fentanyl, fentanyl here that's being pushed across the United States. So America is less safe, and regardless of what you think about immigration, you have to secure our border because border security is indeed national security. I always say I, I believe in immigration. I, I, like you, understand why people come to this country. My mother immigrated here legally. Um, I wouldn't be here if, if it wasn't for that process, but we have to respect the process. Um, so we'll see. Mark Brnovich, thank you so much for laying that all out for us tonight.